Hello, Kreuzer Fulcher, welcome back to the channel, old boy here, and today I am at the site of the Druid's Temple in North Yorkshire. Now before you get excited, this is a folly, so it was constructed in around about the late 1700s, early 1800s, so it's not an authentic Druid's Temple, however the area does have a rich history tracing back through the Iron Age, the Bronze Age and even to the Neolithic. Now I'm going to be visiting some of these sites in future episodes so that I can present you information from these amazing locations. Now today I'm here to read my translation of a text by Dioscorides in his work most commonly known as Demeteria Medica. And the text I'm going to be reading is specifically about the purple dye and some of its medical applications. So with all that being said, let's get into the text. The burning purple possesses a desiccating potency, is a detersive of the teeth, is fit for checking overgrown flesh, and is a cleanser of wounds, causing them to scar over. The burning trumpet shells produce the same, but are more caustic. But if anyone fills them up with salt or brine, in a crude earthen pot, and may burn them once more, they accommodate the cleaning of teeth and plastering over burnt parts. If the drug hardens to a crust, the drug falls off of its own accord, the burnt parts having recovered. Unslaked lime is also produced from them, as we will show in the account of unslaked lime. Wool that has been burnt has the ability to form an escher, is capable of checking overgrown flesh and is a healer of festering wounds. But the wool being without blemish and having been carded, it is burnt in a crude earthen pot like the rest. Wool that is sea purple is also burnt in the same way. But some people, having carded the wool, steep it in honey and with the liquid burn it in like manner. Others arrange small skewers that have been separated from one another over a wide-mouthed potter's vessel and place in thin bars of pine splinters. On the upper side they place the wool in a way so as not to fall, the wool having been carded and steeped in oil. And once more they place the woolen bars alternately and nimbly set the pine splinters on fire from underneath, but take them away once the splinters have been burnt. Animal fat or pitch flowing from the pine splinters is taken and stored away, the substance bathed into the eyes from a ceramic mixing vessel. The substance is poured in and is cured, the water having been shed. After more water has been poured in, it is stirred and this is done until it may not sting if applied to the tongue in whatever quantity it condenses. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that translation. Now we're just going to go and analyse some of the words used in the text so that we can get a little bit more context out of the translations. Porfura caisa tunamine heix erantiken, smectiken odonton uper sarcomaton de catastaltiken, anacathartiken el hon kai apolotiken. Okay, so the first word here, porfura, which is feminine, nominative singular. The LSJ has it listed as a purple fish, murex trunculus, so the murex mollusk, or the purple dye obtained from it. And then we have caisa, which is an aorist active participle from principle part three of caio. And as it's in a feminine nominative singular, it's therefore working with porfura. Caio, which is its present indicative active third person singular form. The LSJ has it listed as kindle, set fire, burn, make hot of the sun, and also suffer from inflammation. So usually the aorist active participle can be uh, translated as, as doing, therefore porfura caisa would be burning purple. Now our verb is a he, which is present indicative active, third person singular from echo. In the transitive here, the LSJ has it as meaning have or hold. It can mean possess of property, keep, have, charge of, hold. So, so far we have porfura caisa, a he. So the burning purple has, holds, possesses. And then we have these two words here, dunamin, which is feminine acute accusative singular of dunamis, which means power or might, strength, the ability to do anything, outward power, influence, authority, faculty, capacity, 
And then we have xerantikein, which is also a feminine accusative singular of xerantikos, and it means uh, causing to dry up. And that gives us our translation of the burning purple possesses a desiccating potency, so it possesses the capacity to, to dry up. Next we have smektikein, or donton, and smektikein is feminine accusative singular of smektikos, which is a purgative or detersive. And then we have odonton, which is masculine genitive plural of odus, which is a tooth. So that gives us the translation is a detersive or purgative of the teeth. Then we have katastaltikein, which is feminine accusative singular of katastaltikos, which is down as meaning fitted for checking or sedate. And then we have uposarkomaton, which is a neutral genitive plural of upersarkoma, which is listed as overgrown flesh. And in modern terms, a hypersarcoma is a type of cancer. And that leads us to the translation of is fitted for the checking of overgrown flesh. Then we have anakathartikein, which is feminine accusative singular of anakathartikos, which means promoting vomiting or for cleansing. Then we have elkhorn, which is neuter genitive plural of elkos, which means wound or festering wound, sore or ulcer. And then at the bottom we have apulotikein, which is feminine accusative singular of apulotikos, which is listed as causing to scar over healing. And then you'll see our passage listed as an example, Dioscorides. 2-4 and then C genitive Elkhorn which we've just looked at so that gives us the translation the burning purple promotes cleansing and is a healer of wounds then we have peri kerukon, which is concerning trumpet shells. And this word kerukon comes from uh, the term kerux, which means herald. So these are described much the same as the burning purple, but they are described as being kaustikoteroi, which is a comparative suffix of kaustikos, which means capable of burning or corrosive or caustic. So they are described as being more caustic or more capable of burning. They used to treat similar ailments, but are also used to catacauma epiplastentes. So catacauma is a neuter nominative plural, means anything burnt or burnt parts or fiery inflammation. And plastentes is an aorist passive participle and is the principal part three of plasso. And as um, it's in the masculine nominative plural, it's working with catacauma, which is form mold or plaster. And then we have the section uh, concerning burnt wool or peri erion cacao menon, which is literally the wool having been burnt. So this is much the same, it's used for similar treatments, but can also be plunetai de eista ophthalmica. Plunetai is present indicative middle passive third person singular from pluno, which is wash, clean, or bathe. And then ophthalmica is the neuter accusative plural of ophthalmicos, which is of or for the eyes. So that would give us a translation of something like the substance is washed ace ophthalmica into the things that are ocular. So it seems to be being used as some kind of uh, eye treatment. Okay, thank you for watching. Thanks to everyone that supports me in the channel. It's very much appreciated. Let me know what you think of the location I've chosen for today. And as always, I'll catch you on the next one. Old boy, out.